around the world, millions of people believe in miracles. But are these miracles real? Or does science have the explanation? In Ireland, the seventh son of a seventh son believes he has magic at his hands. It just came over me, from my whole body. In Ireland, Danny Gallagher is the seventh son of a seventh son. According to Irish legend, this means he can perform healing miracles. If I wanted to stop healing tomorrow morning or even this evening, I couldn't stop because people would still keep coming to me. Does Danny really have miraculous powers? Or is he using a form of hypnosis? Are there other powers at work? And if so, can science detect them? Throughout history, the number seven has often been associated with good luck and magic. It's been said that mathematics is the language of the angels. There's always been something definite, something incredibly structured and infallible about numbers. Now, being the third son of the third son is actually not difficult. Being the seventh son of a seventh son, however, that is actually quite, quite cute, quite clever. It's a statistical fluke, a one in a million chance, but it's made Danny a tabloid sensation. But does he have powers that are truly miraculous? Folklore is cultural history, uh, the way that people look at the world around them and their passed down often through an oral tradition and they're given a lot of respect. It is a, a bit of a burden, but it's a burden I like. It's a burden that uh, I, I'm very fond of because helping people is worth having a burden. Danny Gallagher, the seventh son of a seventh son, now in Nice. For more Danny's reputation as a miracle worker draws people from all four corners of Ireland. For many, they believe he is their last hope. He lays his hands on them, invokes the saints and the saviour, says a secret prayer and lights a candle. For his cure to work, Danny says they must see him on three separate occasions, with the sun setting between each meeting. God bless you, that's all good. No, but come and see you. me next week, won't right. you? Yep, yeah. thank man. you, Dan. Okay, thank you're you. very well. Nice thank to meet you. you. This is the seventh son of a seventh son, a magic aura around them, already from the beginning. One of Danny's most challenging cases was that of Delia Leonard. In 2009, Delia was running a successful riding stable when she was struck down with a sudden and mysterious illness. It was very, very worrying, very terrifying, if you like. They didn't actually know what was wrong with her. She was, got the best of uh, service, but they weren't coming up with the answers. Her body was seized by an unknown infection which baffled doctors. Could Danny help Delia? Perhaps his touch could miraculously cure her mystery illness. In Ireland, Delia was struck down by a raging infection that left doctors baffled. She was under very good consultant in hospital, very well known, very good. And she done everything possible for Delia, all tests, everything. But she couldn't make any diagnosis. It was um, heart wrenching, really. From somebody that's so active, outdoors, outgoing, loves life, for it to be brought down just for the unknown, it's very hard, you know. Delia had a serious fever. Her joints were inflamed, her whole body shook. Blood tests showed a level of inflammation ten times that of a normal, healthy adult. But her doctors had no idea what was causing it. After six weeks with no diagnosis, let alone a cure, Delia left the hospital against medical advice. As a last resort, her friend Michelle had suggested she visit Danny Gallagher. I'd gone to see Danny twice 
but when I um, when Delia was out of hospital and that I just said uh, come on we'll go down people absolutely need help there are many cases where people feel like everything else has failed them even if they have a, a normally skeptical point of view when you get to that point of desperation you'll you'll let the miraculous uh, have a chance can the seventh son of a seventh son do what doctors can't? Can Danny's healing touch cure Delia's mysterious ailment? And if so, what is his secret? Danny says that the key to his healing power first came to him in a vision when he was a young boy. I got her in bed, very, very ill, and there was a clergyman at, at her bedside. There was a, a candle burning. The girl was dying. And this is a vision, a you know, vision, and uh, I came into the room and I came over to the girl and the clergyman, he told me the prayer to say. It's a prayer which, to this day, Danny has kept a secret. I never let anyone know it and no one will ever know it, you know. I to just keep that completely confidential. So, is Danny's secret prayer the answer? There's always be skeptic, 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 skeptic. But then my challenge to the skeptic is go along to those people and talk to them themselves. Three years ago, Christopher Riley spent eight months in hospital. And during that time, he almost lost his fight for life. So is cancer. So from cancer. Liver. And the liver. With his cancer spreading and doctors telling him he only has a few months to live, Christopher has turned to Danny Gallagher for help. When doctors have despaired, can Danny's healing touch bring forth a miracle cure? In Ireland, Danny Gallagher, the seventh son of a seventh son, claims to have what the Irish call the cure, the miraculous gift of healing. People were coming and coming and coming to me and things like that, so I had no other choice. People come to me with all sorts of problems, blind, cancer, wheelchairs, everything. Christopher has liver cancer, and doctors say it will eventually kill him. He has nearly died three times on the operating table. Now, Danny Gallagher is his last hope. See, he cries every time he thinks of Danny because that's when it all came over in, in the hospital. And Danny said, I'm going to pray for him straight away. I couldn't get out of bed mm -hmm. in the hospital. No, he was very sick, man. Very sick. Very sick. At that moment, Christopher says he felt something extraordinary. And this thing just came over me, to my whole body. Many months later, the moment of truth has arrived. Have Danny's prayers been enough? Is Christopher's cancer now in remission? Oh, that's good. Yeah. So how you been since? He's brilliant. Yeah, uh, Still in the hospital and everything, yeah. but everything is stable. Stable. Did I? That's everything is stable. Uh, uh, cancer it didn't spread. It didn't spread. Yeah. He cried. He cried. Yeah, oh, that, that, that's good. That good. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, since that, yeah. I'm improving. I'm mm -hmm. improving great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're a different man, completely different yeah, from the last, the last time I saw you, you were the picture of death. He was. He was to die three times. Mm -hmm. Christopher's cancer hasn't spread. Danny Gallagher is famous in Ireland for being the seventh son of a seventh son. According to Irish legend, such people are born with a power to heal, and that all it takes is the touch of his hand. People often say to me, Danny, could you move your hand because an awful lot of hate coming from your hands, you know. And, but I don't feel that. I feel pins and needles like uh, whenever I'm touching a person. Danny's patients believe they can feel some kind of energy transfer when he lays his hands on them. Uh, it felt very warm. It was extremely warm, actually. It's like a water bottle or something you place on your knee, but I could actually feel heat. Uh, touch me, okay. Are they imagining the heat? Or could this be the source of his miracles? If it is, can modern technology detect it? To test what happens during Danny's healing process, 
an infrared heat-seeking camera is used to film one of his sessions. The test clearly shows that heat does flow from Danny's hands to the person he is healing. When he placed his hands on me, I could feel this heat from his hands on my skin. My body just went red, or really hot. My feet and my legs were absolutely burning. I don't know, is that natural or not? I haven't got a clue. There's something within him that can do this, and that's what comes out when he's healing you, is the heat. It's the only explanation I can think for it. In 2009, Delia suffered from a debilitating, mysterious infection. Her friend Michelle suggested she seek Danny's help. Danny's a great man. He's a very special. People, I think, take him in different ways. Would Delia also experience a miraculous heat transfer? And would Danny's powers cure her? In the grip of her raging infection, which modern science was unable to diagnose or cure, Delia sought the help of famed Irish miracle healer, Danny Gallagher, the seventh son of a seventh son. Normally people went for three days to see Danny, but I said uh, that he's the seventh son of a seventh son. We'll go for the seven days, or seven times. I saw a difference in Delia after a couple of months. And she's back horse riding now and she's bigger and bolder. <laughs> Today, Delia has completely recovered and no one can convince her it wasn't Danny's miraculous touch that cured her. Definitely Danny cured me after a lot of hospital and <laughs> A lot, a lot of tests, so definitely Danny fixed me, thank God, yeah. Back doing my horses and doing what I love to do and it's great. Do Danny's powers really derive from the Irish legend of the seventh son of a seventh son? I'm the seventh son of a seventh son, but I don't know where that originated or from or how it came about. And where that originated, the healing and the seventh son, I can't, uh, uh, I don't understand myself, you know. But the thousands who have felt Danny's touch say his power is nothing short of miraculous. Well, I believe it's, it's Danny himself. It's whatever he has, I don't know. Seven son of a seven son obviously he has, a gift. has some yeah. healing gift. He yeah. has a gift. Yeah. Um, a very remarkable gift. Oh, 
from Derry. From Andre and Claire, Kirk and E. Tipperary, Weissmeath and Kildare, from Slango and Galway. I treated the same The rich and the poor There's no corner bar They're all counted as equals By Danny Gallagher There's people from Derry From Antrim and Clare Kilkenny, Tipperary Westmeath and Kildare, from Slango and Galway, Donegal and Armagh, I've heard all the challenges of Donegal. Then we came a second, and we came a third time, and I can just touch my toes, and I don't feel any pain whatsoever. You claim to touch your toes. <laughs> Very good. See? Uh, to talk about faith healing, about healing. And in an effort to do that, we have three gentlemen joining us, and we'll introduce them very shortly, and we'll have our chat. I hope uh, you'll feel free to give us a ring about anything you want to as part of this as well. Uh, they all ha uh, claim healing powers, but their, their ability in this regard uh, comes from different origins. So we want to begin with uh, some footage, and it features one of our guests, Danny Gallagher, who is uh, based in Cavan these days, and he's the seventh son of a seventh son. So let's have a look at this. I started about 25 years ago healing, and but I ne as I said there, I never wanted to, to be here. People coming to me and people knowing I was a seventh son and things like that. And people started lifting paralyzed arms. I said, oh, you never had a paralyzed arm. You, you only thought that, you know. And then the blind girl got her sight. And that, that made me believe it myself, because when the blind girl got her sight, there was no turning back for me. I just went on from there. I don't operate in churches, you see that, because... Uh, I mean, even clergyman uh, advised me I was carrying the right, in the right way because I leave it open to everyone can come to me. Oh, I, I work from hotels and things like that, where everyone can feel at ease. So nobody's threatened by the, the religion or my religion, so everyone's feel at ease. But uh, people of all nationalities come to me, including the Jews who believe in the great King David, they've come to me as well. Every complaint comes to, regardless if it's a minor complaint, to the person, uh, minor, look at him from an outside, you might think it's a minor, but to the person himself, it's very serious, that's why they come. So, I mean, I listen to everyone, but uh, they come to me with every new one in one. And thank God I've had many, many successes right across the world. God bless you, Billy, yeah. thank you, Colin. Yeah. I couldn't pass your room without blood, in it, and every time I went to the toilet, I was in uh, pain, and uh, the doctors, had me on touch tablet today for um, to cure the pains and all that. Then they brought me in for testers that's um, inserting cameras up here and down here to see you could define what was wrong with my kidneys. They checked me for cancer and first they said I could have cancer uh, going through me and uh, they checked me and said the testers came back clear. Then they were saying it was um, uh, stones in my kidneys. I couldn't believe, like, when I seen Danny, it was no, um, uh, soldier, like, cameras or 
had to say, God, if I can get this done and that, just blessed you and said his prayer for three times. And that was year, eight months to a year ago and I haven't been on a tablet since. I uh, have to drink fluids and my kidneys is great and my bones is great and all my testes is clear and everything. Not everyone are helped, and I stress that very strongly. I also stress that no one coming to me must ever stop taking any form of treatment. That's very, very important. And no one should stop taking any form without their doctor's consent and going to their family doctor. I stress that strongly. But not everyone is helped, and I strongly stress it. Not everyone. I don't want to raise the hopes of everyone. Even our Lord, the greatest healer of all time, he didn't cure everyone. Come to me, they never come up to my face and say, Danny, I don't believe this. Because, I mean, my uh, chairs are backed up by the medical evidence, they're backed up by doctors, they're backed up by the television, they're backed up by the press. And it's not my story, it's the doctor's story. I mean, take the blind girl, what occurred in England, the blind English girl. I mean, the evidence, doctor's evidence is there, and she gave me her blind certificate, her white stick, a souvenir. So, I mean, the evidence is there. So, to skeptics, I mean, uh, naturally, I don't try to, to push it down their throat and say, oh, come on, you must believe this, or uh, I'll make you believe it. No, that's entirely up to them. person no, I don't want people and I always like that I mean I, I like to be I mean I get in jeans and everything go out on a bicycle and things like that go for walks and go for a plane of the dog and things like that but um, people see me as a healer and everyone calls me a, a faith healer or a healer but for that name it's the media put that name in me the healer so I prefer they just call me Danny you know what I mean just as an ordinary person there he is. That's Danny Gallagher from Derry, uh, based in Kavanagh, seventh son of a seventh son, uh, praying over people and uh, the laying of hands as well. And Danny's with us. You're welcome. Yeah. Nice thank to you have you with us here today well. and thank you for joining us. It cured hundreds of thousands of people all over the world by absent healing. People just write to me, it cured thousands by absent healing. Although I mean, I've press cuttings all over the world with that too, but I've never highlighted that, you know, I've never highlighted it, but I've cured many, many people with absent healing just the same as people meet and meet. And do they, do, do they have to have faith for them to be cured? Well, they do, that's the thing, but see, people write to me, but you must realise, Mary, that people have faith. I mean, people uh, come to a healer, they, uh, though they might say out there, I don't believe that, and they don't believe me, but whenever they are struck down by something, God protect everybody from it, you know what I mean? But whenever they are struck down, they clutch at everything. Even babies don't have faith. You know, I have saw babies coming to me with their eyes shut, didn't even know I was touching them, yet they were cured of skin rashes and different things, you know? Just, and, uh, I mean... Take the, I mean, to that blind English girl, the one you'd highlighted in that yeah, program earlier. Saw that, I mean, she, she said herself that she didn't believe it, but somebody brought her, and when she was brought to my centre in Birmingham, and I went out to her myself and coaxed her to come in, and the crowd there made her come in as well, and she got her sight completely normal. She gave me her white stick of souvenir and her blind certificate. I've got a souvenir today. And when did you, when did you first realise that you know? you were kind of different, that things were happening? That well, I know it came to me when I was eight year old and a vision was about a girl dying and dying in the bed, I mean, and there was a small crucifix there this was, and there was a candle burning at her bedside as you saw me in the film clipping earlier there. And I came over and this girl was dying and dying from cancer and there was a clergyman at her bedside. So I laid my hands on her body and the clergyman told me the prayer to say and she recovered completely. So after that, there was something, all, after that vision, there was always something telling me I was doing the wrong thing, I was doing the wrong thing. And no matter what I did in life, something was always telling me I was doing the wrong it's thing. Like it's only when I started healing, I realized I was doing the right thing. So mm. that's how it mm. all came to me in a vision. Uh -huh. But it just snowballed from there. I mean, I didn't want to be a healer. It just snowballed. Mm -hmm. Danny Gallagher, a young faith healer from County Derry, with a really extraordinary track record of miracle cures already behind him in his young career. Now, it's up to the people themselves to decide whether I helped anyone or not. Those testimonies right around the ballroom are the testimonies from the people, not from me, from you and everyone. So uh, the testimonies, as you'll see, blind have got their sight, deaf have got their hearing, paralyzed people have got power in their limbs, 
and people dying from cancer have been restored to complete normal health. Many who come to him do so as a last resort. Men like Dennis Pearson almost totally crippled for years spine trouble. He had to wear a steel body brace all over. After just one visit to Gallagher, he says now that he can run, jump and skip like he hasn't done for years. He was so delighted in fact that he was photographed for a local newspaper climbing up a lamppost. I can't really explain how it's happened and I don't think that the, the faith healer could explain how it happens except he's told us that he gets the power through his hands higher power than we know of. Are you a religious man yourself? I'm not a religious man. I'm a God-fearing man, but not a religious man. I don't take it so serious. Can you remember the first morning when you woke up after you'd been to see Danny the night before? What was it like? I woke up and you feel something is queer. And then you, you suddenly, after a short time, you suddenly find you're moving and doing things that you, you can't believe. It's a Do you worry about might come back, that the pain might return? Uh, no, I don't think I should ever worry about it returning. Uh, I don't think it will. My side and my back. The man himself is a surprisingly quiet, unassuming Irishman who says he first learned of his powers in a dream as a child and for years didn't want to try them out. But now, after only a couple of years working, he has a number of clinics all over Southern Ireland and literally hundreds of glowing testimonial letters from every corner of the UK. I believe it's a God-given gift. There's no other explanation for it. It's just a God-given gift. Yeah. And you lived all your life, really, knowing that you've got this yes. one in a million talent. Yes, I did, but you know, I didn't want to make use of it because I knew my life wouldn't be my own, you know what I mean? I didn't make use of it and it's that reason only, but now that I have uh, seen th thousands and eight thousands of people have benefited from it, I'm really pleased that I did because you only have to look at the testimonies wherever I go and you'll see miracle cures. Well, I've seen people myself, in fact, today leaving this hall, very, very happy people who were yeah. in one way or another infirm when they came in. People suffering from serious diseases such as cancer and things like that, and their testimonies are there too, where they've been cured. So, I mean, there's no explanation for it. It's that yeah. hand, in fact, was completely closed, virtually, for well, six years? Sort of bent like that, more or less. And what happened yesterday? Well, I came to see Danny. He um, took us inside. We all blessed him. Feels all right, and I said, oh, well, I move with my fingers. I can stretch my fingers. I haven't been without this stick for the last four years, which everyone in Erdenden knows me. I've lived here 34 years in New Street. I my stick up to go to the toilet, I've had to use it. And I left it in the house this morning and walked up to the high street and got my paper without it. You must have had, in fact, since you started this, you must have had a lot of sceptical people coming to you. You must have had a lot of people who think you're perhaps a bit of a con man. Yes, well, and what's actually, your to that? Uh, I mean, uh, everyone uh, uh, believes that, but when they come face to face with me, they can't do that. I mean, here in England, here in Birmingham, I mean, nobody believed in me. Now, look, everyone believes it. I mean, they only have to come into the ballroom to see. Take the, my first success here in Birmingham, a gentleman who uh, was here crippled with arthritis. I mean, he's dancing and running about complete normal now. I mean, that, uh, they were going to, the uh, hospitals uh, decided they were going to take out the joints in that gentleman. Now he's complete normal running about. The most striking example we witnessed first-hand was Gert, a mentally very sprightly septuagenarian who literally crawled out of her taxi into the hall in the morning and yet by lunchtime was walking completely unaided as she hadn't done in years. I couldn't walk in here yesterday. But how do you explain it, Gert? How do you think you can do that? I don't know. It's, he's got some, some, some extra power, I know. Do you think it's a miracle? Walk towards me. Do you think it's a miracle? Walk to you. No trouble, is it? Do, do, do you seriously think it's a miracle? I do, absolutely. Yes, it is a miracle. Where are you going to go from here? Because it's going to be like this all your life, is it? To tell you the truth, my life's like uh, water in a stream. I've just got caught on in the tide and I'm washed on. I really don't know where I'm going, you know? Irishman Danny Gallagher claims to have the healing power to heal many ailments. Gallagher is well known throughout Europe. Michelle Rail attended one of his sessions today. Gallagher believes he has a gift from God. He says the power of his hands has helped blind see, the crippled walk, and cured the cancer of others. She says Danny helped to cure her of lung cancer. Now her son is undergoing radiation treatment for a brain tumor.
What would you do if it was your son? And I know there's a lot of both children and stuff like that. You do all you can. Dining up to see Gallagher at Fitzpatrick's Hotel on Lexington Avenue. They enter his room as reverently as if they were going to confession. All of them are here for a cure. Kenny Smith has chronic fatigue syndrome. Gallagher has been traveling the world, healing thousands, he claims. He's happy to share headlines as well as video clips and other items that proclaim his supposed successes. But Gallagher says what makes him uniquely special is that he's the seventh son of his parents, just like his father was in his family. That makes Gallagher the seventh son of a seventh son. Well, it's believed for centuries old that the seventh son of a seventh son possessed those healing powers, you know, healing powers, and uh, I mean, that's how people come to me. Anyway, I was still, still in the town yet, but I was born, reared, and put up. So, I mean, people always kept coming to me. Gallagher's rituals include touching the body with a crucifix, whispered prayers, and holding a lighted candle. A session lasts just a couple of minutes. When I touch them, I feel like pins and needles in my hands, and most people tell me they feel a heat and a body or a sensation in the body whenever I touch them. Bridget Cleary came looking for relief for a frozen shoulder due to an injury. There was like a lot of heat and a lot of sensation. And I felt automatically when he raised my hand up that I was never able to raise it like that before. So I really do testify that uh, my hand is probably a lot better now than it was before I went into the room. This woman says her unspecified ailment, if not cured, has at least been helped by her visit. Very pleasant. Uh, not easy to describe. It's just a very beautiful feeling. Gallagher says cures come through him, but only when God chooses. He claims priests and doctors among his followers. Nor do they know about any healing tradition from a seventh son born of a seventh son. But the church does believe in the possibility of miracle cures. God's power can, can work through an individual and through touch, through prayer, that a miracle could possibly uh, occur. From County Derry. Derry County. Can I first just say I'm, I'm pleased to be here today and I'm very happy to be in the studios with you. We're very happy to have you with us Thank as well. Mm -hmm. Now, in Celtic legend, in the Irish legend, uh, this is a very popular phenomena if you are the seventh son of a seventh son. Uh, if you want, one of my most famous cures was a blind girl who was 20, uh, 22 years stone blind and she got her sight after she visited me and she was 22 years stone blind. Now with the best respect to the medical profession, they did, her, they did their best for the girl but they said she couldn't, she would never see and she got her sight completely normal after her, she visited. Now is this the, your first patient? Was she your first patient? No, she wasn't my first patient. No, You're the, years old. Uh, Yes, that's correct. When, the, when I was eight years old, the healing came to me in a vision. It was about a girl dying in bed, and she was all covered in white, all covered in white. There's a, a priest by her bedside, and there's a candle burning, a small candle was burning beside those a crucifix. So I took the crucifix, and the, uh, the priest told me the prayer to say, which I still say to this present day, but I, I, I keep it confidential. And I lifted the clothes off the girl and laid my hands on the, her body and blessed her with the crucifix and she recovered completely and after that there was something always telling me through my life I was doing the wrong thing no matter what I done in life something was always telling me mm -hmm. I was doing the wrong thing it's only when I started healing that I get satisfaction and know I was doing the right thing and so thank God from that little girl that I cured at the ice cream van that took my story worldwide and thousands have been cured all over the world since then including a girl from Canada which was shown on Canadian television who was paralyzed completely from a road accident. That girl was shown on Canadian television walking completely normal again. Mm. That's when I visited. But thank God from that little girl right through to now many people have benefited their health has come back. I have photographs of people who have a lady who, who had cancer, particularly too. We have taken a, a picture of her with the cancer, and it shows her a year later on a front page of a national paper what she was like after she visited me. It showed her out working her, uh, out working her farm completely normal. And can I go back to this? Just only two weeks ago, there was a gentleman who was, uh, I went to see here in New Jersey who was extracted with throat cancer, who couldn't speak. He had no voice. He'd lost his voice. And on and the doctors expected he had cancer. The very next day he saw me, his voice was back and just this week he's got the clearance from the hospital that the cancer has vanished completely. And this was in Thank New God. Jersey? That's here in New Jersey. 
I see. In fact, since I came to the United States. Now, now tell me, of course, you have traveled all over in Europe and Southeast Asia mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and um, you've had many Indian patients. But yeah. tell me exactly what do you do when you, when somebody wants to be healed, just walk us through it. Like, what exactly do you do when you, you know, how do you bless them? I bless them with a small crucifix. I laid my hand on their body and also touch the affected part of their body. Say it was your shoulder, your back, or your leg. I just touch that part of your body and bless it with a crucifix. I place a little uh, blessed candle in your hand, which I light, and just say a prayer, which is confidential, uh, which I keep confidential. And it just only takes a few moments, and that's all to it. And the person comes, sees me, then goes home again. And perhaps that might be the end of his trouble. Please. Every known ailment, people have been cured coming so to depression, me. anxiety, yes, cancer, yes. throat cancer, cancer, all kinds of ailments, arthritis, multicirrhosis, every known ailment, yeah. So all over the world, every country I visited, people have been cured in those countries, every country I visited. People here in the United States, people in England, people in Africa, every place I've gone, people mm -hmm. have been cured. And uh, they run into thousands and thousands. Now, at my clinic, there's uh, press reports displayed all around the walls. I also show a video which is taken from television clippings that shows people that cured in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And people can read about it in the waiting room where right. at my clinics. And you'll see people, just what you've sh shown here, yeah, right. that's taken from photographed copies of national papers all over the world. Right, this is uh, Daily News. That's New York's hometown newspaper. Mm. Uh, with the caption says, he puts his faith in healing the sick, Danny Gallagher. Fla followers of healers still believe in miracles. I hope to be here for a, a few more weeks yet, and uh, also in New York and the, uh, Hamilton, Trenton, that's in New Jersey, those two places, and New York as well. Uh. So if somebody would like to, uh, like to speak with you or, or have an appointment to see, you know, so you've healed them, they can uh, get to you either in New York or in Jersey. Yeah, they can get directly to me. If they want to speak to me directly, they can phone me to New Jersey. Uh, or uh, I will also be uh, holding clinics in here on Saturday and Sundays in New York. Uh, details of you, you will be giving them later. Uh, but in New Jersey, anyone can ring me at any time, night or day, and leave a message for me in the voicemail. I will get back to them. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you very much, Danny. It's uh, a pleasure to have you here with us and uh, tell us about your healing powers. And thank uh, you very much indeed. Thank yeah, you. God bless you. Okay. God bless you all. Uh, Danny Gallagher putting his faith in healing in his hands with his Midas touch. Uh, it's, it's a spinal disorder with things my legs you know, walk back, that's under the hand. And you have had medical treatment for this condition for a period of time. Year and a half. Year and a half. And with no great success. Mm -hmm. So then you decided to come to see Danny. And could you just tell us in your own words what kind of improvement you've had, if any? Well, I've been, I lift my legs up like that, you know. And I couldn't do that before. Both legs? Both legs, yes. Yeah. And you feel as though that you're beginning? It's starting to come so slowly. As a child, obviously, I was told by my parents that I was blind. When I looked at that child, and her, her eyes and my eyes met like two torches shining at each other, and I told the mother that I was a seventh son of a seventh son. You know, the only resort they had was Danny, so they went to see him when we were children, and we got our sight back, and I'm very grateful. I've heard loads of stories about Danny. My purpose of coming to London was to uh, to meet those girls again because one of them, you know, that one of them's going to Australia for the first time in their life. They're going to be separated. 
How are you? Uh, hello, Karen. That's lovely to see you too. Okay. Good to see you. Uh, lovely. Always a pleasure. And you too. Yeah. God, you got so big I'm from sure. the first time. Yeah. It's from the first time I saw you. We used small babies, you know. Mm. <laughs> so different now. So big. Yeah, yeah, we were born in January. And until about six weeks later, we realised I couldn't see. So we took them to King's College Hospital. And uh, I seen various doctors there. But then, after attending the hospital for several times and other hospitals, they told us like they were unable to see, they were totally blind. We heard about Danny from the Irish Post. So we got in touch with him, and then we visited him three times in total. And that was about after they were about four to five months old at this stage. So within about a couple of weeks, they started to see. Being the seventh son, the seventh son, and I mean, it's known for centuries old that they possess healing powers. And I couldn't explain the cures, how the cures take place. I just don't know how they get, what to do with the seventh son or what's not. And it's yes. lovely to see and don't see the girls again, you know, it's I lovely. And uh, my mind always keeps flashing back to the first time you brought uh, them. Yeah. It's a different story. It's a story. long time ago now. Yeah. What's a different story mm. today? It is. It's a wonderful, story. wonderful story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it was a very sad time when we came back from the hospital and to realise they're going to be blind for life. So what Danny had done for us was amazing. It was a great relief when they could see. I feel really, really blessed that I have my sight because I would, I'd be with a stick and I'd be in life of darkness, so mm -hmm. I feel privileged and grateful that I have been in contact with Danny mm -hmm. and he's a friend of our family as well. So I feel very, very grateful by I have 100% faith in him and it's been proven, so mm -hmm. we're proven facts. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful. Thank God both got their sight. I know it would have been, I know it would have been hurtful if one had got their sight and the other hadn't got their sight. I never feel that I do it in a strange way. I never feel that I do it. I mean, I don't feel any different from you or from anybody else. I just feel it's a gift from God. I never feel it any way that I don't it at all. But thank God that it does happen after this day, you know? I do believe, and it's like, you know, I've seen evidence of Danny's work. People who come to me, of all denominations, come to me who, uh, uh, who have no faith and never been inside a church in their life, but just to thank God they've been cured as well. But in saying that, I want to stress strongly, I don't cure every single person. Our Lord, the greatest healer of all time, did not cure everyone. God rest their mum, she wrote me a beautiful letter and one of the most touching letters I've ever received where she expressed her heartfelt thanks for the girls getting their sight and she went on to explain in that letter how different life would have been for the two of them, carrying a white stick the rest of their life. You know. But I know she passed away, but thank God she passed away knowing that the girls could see.